when you're doing science, the questions you ask matter as do the questions that you don't ask. Like, for example, I came across the study this week that was hamstrung by the fact that the researchers failed to ask, hey, are we a bunch of ridiculous fuckholes so buried in motivated reasoning with our heads so far up our asses that we can't think objectively? And because they failed to ask that simple question, we're now inundated with dumbass headlines like this one from the religious news services. Quote, study spirituality boosts mental health during isolation and despair. And the even more egregious, quote, Religious people coped better with COVID-19 pandemic, research suggests, end quote. And that's from no less than the University of Goddamn Cambridge's website. Now, to be clear, neither the study nor the research suggested either of those things. The researchers suggested that, but only because of the aforementioned incuriosity as to the location of their heads in relation to the interiors of their rectums. I mean, religious people were more likely to die of covid than their non-religious counterparts, right? So, like, it's pretty fucking hard to argue they coped better with the pandemic unless your metric is how quickly they freed up their hospital beds. Religiosity made people less likely to get vaccinated, less likely to respect lockdown orders, less likely to trust public health experts. In no possible way did they cope better with the pandemic, but... Only 4.3% of religious people told a rando on the phone that they felt miserable during the pandemic uh, compared to 6.1% of non-religious people. So, you know, they've got enough math to at least claim otherwise in a headline. And yes, all their data is that fucking dumb. There are actually three different studies that are being talked about in these two stories that I referenced, and they're all the same motivated reasoning bullshit that fails to account for really basic confounding variables. One comes up to us from a group called the Fetzer Institute. This is a group whose president and CEO describes their whole reason for being as, quote, belief that faith and spirituality are essential to human flourishing, end quote. Despite that claim being demonstrably false. Hell, not only is it false, but all the evidence points in the exact opposite direction. The more religious a group or a country or a city or whatever is, the less human flourishing they tend to do. Well, yeah, these guys surveyed 3,000 Americans and they asked them, you know, about religion and how they cope with COVID. And what do you know? The people who belong to the group that tells them that mental illness is a personal shortcoming and actively discourages its members from seeking psychiatric help reported less mental illness. It's so weird. Of course, the survey didn't account for the single obvious variable that always dooms these studies. That is membership. Right. See, these studies, they always show religious people live longer or they suffer less or they're happier, whatever. But when you separate out churchgoers from religious non-churchgoers, you're going to find that those advantages only accrue to the churchgoers. And then when you compare those churchgoers to secular people who belong to literally any group that meets at least once a month, why suddenly you see the advantages across the board. I mean, yeah, people who were part of religious organizations that met regularly probably did cope with the isolation of COVID better. But it's not because they were religious. It's because they were less isolated. There's literally no need for further explanation. They had a larger community to draw from. But not only did these bullshit surveys fail to acknowledge that answer, they didn't even account for it. It's relatively easy to isolate this variable after all. It takes like two or three additional questions. How often do you attend church? And do you belong to any non-religious group that meets up regularly? That's it. And by the way, this is not some fucking secret that's been baffling science for ages until I just now puzzled it out in this diatribe. You need be only mildly familiar with the literature on this subject to be aware of this common confound. I know that because I'm only mildly familiar with the literature on this subject. If any of the people involved in any of these surveys had any real interest in answering the fundamental question of how religion and spirituality affected people during the lockdown, they would have accounted for this shit. And they'd have at least acknowledged somewhere in their press releases that religion was heavily correlated with vaccine hesitancy, conspiracy thinking, embrace of alternative therapies, etc. But that's not the fucking point. The point is to gather up a bunch of numbers that look like data if you promise not to put your glasses on and use it to pretend that religion serves a function. Hell, in the Fetzer study, they say the data, quote, shows that spirituality is like a vaccine inoculating people against isolation and despair, quote. 
No, no, fuck it, doesn't it? An only slightly less bullshit study out of Cambridge concluded that religious faith might, quote, build resilience and help people cope with adversity by providing hope, consolation, and meaning in tumultuous times, end quote. Bullshit. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. And look, I get that neither of those are much of an endorsement, even if they were true. The ability to pretend you're a fuzzy pony living in the land of Hugville would probably do the same shit. And I don't think many people would recommend it regardless. Even fewer would pretend that that made it true. But somehow that's the best religious researchers can manage, even when they rig the system to get their favorite outcome. And for some fucking reason legitimate news outlets are still willing to play along <laughs>